John Kelly. Uh, as I think everybody knows, John Kelly was a Marine, uh, uh, command of the Marines. He was a general, uh, very well respected, very admired within the military. When Trump became president, he tapped Kelly uh, to be his homeland security guy to secure the border. And Kelly did uh, the job at the border, and uh, Trump was very, 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 very complimentary of Kelly's uh, uh, job at the border for the first year. And then uh, after that, when uh, his chief of staff, Trump's chief of, chief of staff resigned or was fired or whatever, uh, he tapped John Kelly to be his chief of staff. And he was indeed the longest serving chief of staff in Trump's first uh, term. I think he was chief of staff for a year and a, a, year and a half. Um, uh, uh, John Kelly was obviously spent a lot of time, a lot of time with Trump. He was chief of staff. <laughs> he was there for the big decisions, the important decisions. He interacted with Trump on a regular basis. Uh, he, he was a liaison between Trump and, and all these other things that were going on. And, um, uh, you know, we're talking about an incredibly successful uh, military commander uh, in the early days of the Trump first administration. Uh, Trump talked about his generals. I mean, he 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 hired he appointed a number of generals to senior positions, and he was very proud of that fact. Um, you had a, a, a general, of course, heading up the the Defense Department, Mathis, and you had generals in the um, in the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, adv uh, God, I forget the name of the position. The National Security Advisor. And Kelly was chief of staff. So Kelly got to really know Trump. Um, and, you know, uh, he has written over the last four years since he left, since Trump left office, he's written some pretty negative things about Trump. Um, uh, over and over and over again, and uh, things that have not been contradicted by anybody else in a similar position vis-a-vis -vis Trump. That is, other people within administration, the first term, have not come out and said, Kelly is complete bullshit. This is completely wrong. He's misrepresenting the facts. This is not what happened. It's just not happened. And indeed, several of the other generals and several of the other people in national security positions, like John Bolton, have actually confirmed much of what Kelly has said and agreed with Kelly's assessment of Trump, which was very, very, very negative. And, and one of the real tragedies of, of the current election cycle and one of the great tragedies, I think, of American politics right now is the fact that You've got these very, very senior Republicans who served in the Trump administration in senior position, interacted with Trump, most so, uh, uh, and have come out massively against Trump. And the Republican Party has chosen to completely ignore them. And this is, it really is unprecedented. I can't think of another administration, Democrat or Republican, where senior officials within that administration, after they left, have come out and been so negative, so negative on the previous administration. Now, it's rare that somebody serves a term, loses, and then runs again, but still. Now, um, Kelly has in the last few days, I guess, done a series of interviews with the New York Times about Trump. And it's pretty harsh what he has to say. Pretty harsh. So, for example, uh, New York Times asked Kelly whether he thinks Trump is a fascist. And Kelly looks at definition of fascism. This is from a dictionary. It's not my definition of fascism. It's from a dictionary. And he says... He says, I'm quoting Kelly, well, look at the definition of fascism. It's a far-right, authoritarian, ultra-nationalist political ideology and movement characterized by a dictatorial leader, centralized autocracy, militarism, forcibly suppress forcible suppression of opposition, 
belief in a natural social hierarchy, he says. He continues, so certainly in my experience, those are the kind of things that he thinks would work better in terms of running America. So Kelly is saying, Trump would like to run a fascist regime. He can't, for a variety of reasons, have to do with our rule of law in our country and our institutions, separation of powers and things like that. But that's what he'd like to do. He, he added, certainly the former president is in the far right area. He's certainly an authoritarian, admires people who are dictators. He has said that. So he certainly falls into the general definition of fascist, for sure. Now think about that. We're talking about Kelly and Bolton and Mathis and McMaster, all basically characterizing Donald Trump the same way. Somebody who admires dictators and who would like, who would like to have their kind of power in America. And yet, this has all been ignored. People close to him, people who served unto him, people in national security positions. Now everybody says, oh, these are rhinos, they're not real Republicans, these are Democrats, they love Biden, da 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 Why did Trump ever appoint them? Now, you, you can't have it both ways. You can say, look, Trump is really bad at selecting people. And in this case, he selected really, really bad people. And um, they turned out to be really, really, really bad, a, a lot of people, because Trump had a lot of turnover. And these are bad people. So, but Trump's a bad judge of character. Okay, you could argue that. But they don't, right? They love Trump, and Trump knows all, particularly uh, he, he's the best decider in terms of character. Or you could say, uh, you know, these people are, you know, so they're either bad, and uh, Trump made a mistake in hiring them, or they're incredible and Trump is bad. I mean, there's no... And the reality is that, for example, John Bolton, I remember with John Bolton, I met, I saw John Bolton, I, I was in a, being, in, uh, was in a, being interviewed by a Wall Street Journal thing and he was there in the studio and we talked. And this is before he was nominated, before he was approached by Trump. And it was like, I like John Bolton. John Bolton's tough, he's serious. He's a foreign policy expert, and he had the right approach. And at the time, when I was talking to John Bolton, he was like considered, I mean, I mean, the superstar within the Republican Party. He was like the guy. He was like, MAGA loved John Bolton. And then two years later, John Bolton's the devil. He's the worst. He's awful. And the same with Kelly. The same with McMaster. The same with Mathis. I remember when Ma Mathis was... So, uh, selected as, as going to be the defense secretary and, and the Republicans and MAGA were like, whoa, look at the quality of the people Trump is bringing on board. The best people. Mathis is like a genius. He's one of the great American generals. I was like, wait a minute, Mathis not that great. I was critical of Mathis, right? And then as soon as they turned against Trump, oh no, they're just, they're awful. They're terrible. Don't listen to one word that they say. And the amazing thing is, no, nobody listens to them, and as a consequence, the Republican Party has chosen Trump again, in spite of the fact that these senior people, these people with real experience, these incredibly knowledgeable people, and people who know Trump in as president better than anybody else. Um, Kelly continues to say, he says about Trump, quote, he certainly prefers the dictator approach to government. Uh, he said that Mr. Tr Mr. Trump never accepted the fact that he wasn't the most powerful man in the world. And by power, I mean an ability to do anything he wanted, anytime he wanted, with no constraints. Again, to quote Kelly, I think he'd love to be just like he was in business. He could tell people to do things and they would do it and not really bother too much with whether, with whether the legalities were there or not. Right? Uh, Kelly's reason Kelly decided to do this interview with the New York Times is he's particularly upset about Trump's comments recently about using the military against domestic opponents, uh, about the enemy within, and which Kelly found incredibly dangerous. Uh, again, quote, and I think the, using, uh, the issue of using the military on to go after American citizens 
is one of those things I think is very, very, very bad thing. Even to say it for political purposes to get elected, I think is a very, very bad thing, let alone actually doing it. <laughs> uh, Kelly also says that he told Trump, you can't do this, you can't use the, the, the army, the, the military for domestic issues. And uh, he, he told over and over and over again, he had explained this to Trump. And, um, you know, again, to quote Kelly, quote, originally conversations would be, Mr. President, that's outside your authority. Or, you know, that's a routine use. You really don't want to do that inside the United States. But now that he's talking about it as I'm going to do it, it's again, it's the serving. Again, that was all Kelly. Uh, Kelly said Trump had a complete mis lack of fundamental understanding. And this I've said over and over and over again for eight years now. A complete lack of understanding of the basic American values and what being president is about. Again, quoting Kelly, he's certainly the only president that has all but rejected God. I mean, again, I've been saying this for eight years. Nobody believes me. He's certainly the only president that has all but rejected what America is all about and what makes America America in terms of our Constitution, in terms of our values, the way we look at everything to include family and government. He's certainly the only president I know of, certainly in my lifetime, that was like that rejecting the essence of America. He just doesn't get the values, Kelly says. He pretends. He talks. He knows more about America than anybody, but he doesn't. Uh, he says, from the beginning, when he started working for Trump um, as his chief of staff, he had to explain to the president that he, like other top government officials, swore an oath to the Constitution and that that was more important than their loyalty to the president. That is, their loyalty ultimately was not to the president, but to the Constitution. And, and Trump could not get it. Could not get it. And uh, Trump basically told him that, you know, uh, this is Kelly, he and I talked about it, and it was a new concept for him, this idea of a Loyalty to the Constitution, I guess, is the best way to put it. And I don't think it's one he ever totally accepted. Uh, Kelly said that personal loyalty, personal loyalty, is virtually everything to him. That's dictatorial. That's how dictators behave. There's no Constitution. There's no principles. There's no... It's all about the leader and loyalty to that leader. Um, it's pretty scary because this is the thing about a Trump second court term. Kelly won't be there. Mathis, as much as I was critical of him, is at least, an, 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 you know, is an American. Won't be there. Um, you know, he had... As chief economic advisor, Ed Cohen, who then resigned after Charlottesville, he had, uh, you know, a treasury secretary I didn't like, but, but is at least a, you know, reasonable, reasonable understanding of economics and try to do what he could to rein in Trump's advocacy of tariffs and other things. He had McMaster, he had Bolton, he, had, uh, he even had, I have to say, he even had his son-in-law. He had what I would consider semi-decent people around him who, adults in the room, who reined him in. This time he's had years to prepare. He's built a cadre of Trump loyalists pers with personal loyalty to him, not the country, not the Constitution, but to him. And those are the people that are going to stand around him. They're going to be yes men who support his crazy ideas. And, you know, whereas he expected the generals to be loyal to him last time, 
This time he won't appoint them unless he knows they are loyal to him. You know, uh, Kelly says about the generals around him, he says, quote, suddenly a big surprise for him again was if you remember at the beginning of the administration, he would talk about his generals. I don't know why he thought that. But then a very big surprise for him was that they were those of us who were former generals and certainly people still on active duty, that the commitment, the loyalty was to the Constitution without question, without second thought. That was a big surprise to him, that the generals were not loyal to the boss, in this case him. I mean, Trump has already said he would replace everybody at the Pentagon. He changed the generals. He'd find generals loyal to him. Now, that is scary. That is very, very scary. Now, we've heard a lot of stuff about Trump and Hitler, and there's a story in Atlantic uh, today, I think, about comments Trump has made about Hitler. And Kelly talks about this. He says that um, uh, Trump spoke positively of Hitler. He would say, quote, he commented more than once that, you know, Hitler did some good good things, too. You know, Kelly said he doesn't think Trump knows anything about history, that he's completely ignorant of history. Um, and then Kelly would say, in response to Trump, he would say, first of all, you should never say that to Trump. But if you knew what Hitler was all about from the beginning to the end, everything he did was in support of his racist, fascist life, you know, you know the philosophy, so that nothing he did you could argue was good. It was certainly not done for the right reason. But Kelly says, yeah, the conversation would usually end when he said that, and then a few months later, Trump would come back to it. Obviously, Trump likes strong dictators. Hitler was one of those. Uh, and then finally, Kelly <clears throat> talked about, and has talked about in the past and talked about again, Trump's deep disdain for soldiers who have died, taken prisoners of war, or been injured in the battlefield. Again, to quote Kelly, certainly he's not wanting to be seen with amputees, amputees that lost their limb in defense of this country, fighting for every American, him included, to protect them, but didn't want to be seen with them. That's an interesting perspective from the commander-in-chief to have. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Kelly again would say, he would just say, look, it just doesn't look good for me. It's, it, it's not a good look to be filmed next to an amputee. Uh, Kelly also confirmed that he considered uh, service members who were injured or killed losers and suckers. Uh, and, and Kelly goes on, the time in Paris was not the only time that he said it. Um, that he said it on several occasions. Whenever John McCain's came, name came up, he'd go through this rant about him being a loser and all the people, all those people were suckers. And why do you people think that people getting killed are heroes? And he'd go through this rant. To me, I could never understand why he was that way. He may be the only American citizen that feels that way about those who gave their lives or served their country. <laughs> I mean, if half of what Kelly's saying is true, and I believe that 100% of it is true, you can't, I mean, I, I don't know how you can vote for Trump. I'm not going to say you can't, because I know some of you will. I just don't know how you can vote for this monster. He is a little monster. Now, he might be good on this issue or that issue, but he is about as horrific as a human being as can be. <sighs> anyway, so that uh, was published, um, the, the transcripts of the uh, interviews, the three interviews he did with the New York Times. Uh, there's also the story in Atlantic about uh, a variety of different comments that uh, the Trump has made uh, with references to the Nazis and his kind of I mean, stupid, ignorant attempts to be sympathetic 
to uh, the Nazis in some bizarre kind of way. Um, you can find that in the Atlantic.